Here you can see that White would like to push f5, but uh, of course that would invite to knight e5. So, I mean, you, you don't need many seconds to, to tell me White's choice here, right? I'll just give you 45 seconds. Standard trick for any Benoni player with White, and uh, that's something that Black should be aware of. Of course, RZ 2018, Chess Knight, Medina Tiger, that's right. This is what we should be careful about when we play the Benoni with the black pieces. And we've, if we played with the white pieces, we should for sure have this in our arsenal. It's a very important technique. All right, Medina Tiger, heavy the hero, you got it also. Yeah, a lot of people found this uh, standard method in the Benoni. Either, either you know it or you don't. Uh, but if you're interested in chess history, check that game Penrose versus uh, Mikhail Tal. Uh, Mikhail Tal was very, very effective with the Benoni, but in that game, he suffered to this Nice trick. All right, I'll ask Chess Knight uh, on this one. Okay, please go ahead, Chess Knight. How do you continue here? All right, so e5, we sack a pawn in order to leave that square occupied by a black pawn. So now that the knight cannot go to e5 anymore, uh, now this move is very strong, f5. And we can see here later on the benefits, right? We can put the knight on e4, maybe we can push this pawn to d6. Uh, from my personal experience, I remember that this plan is strong and it's even stronger when sometimes black has played h5. If they play h5, this plan becomes even stronger because in that case, they also have some weaknesses on the light squad. So please notice the pattern. No? We sack a pawn so that they cannot use this square uh, with the knights. But you can also come across in the King's Indian and I think, yeah, also in the Knight of like uh, Tactical Magician was saying. All right, we should probably get back to business here, back to the year 2020 instead. Here we are again in this game. Um, let's see here with the white pieces, uh, Tohir Jonova and playing black Jacobson. So we were speaking to, who, who was showing this? I, I don't remember anymore. I think it was Tactical Magician, right? Yeah, all right. Uh, get on with your magic here, Tactical Magician. How, how did you play here? Let's see again. What did black play? Exactly. So we play d5 because we want a white pawn on that square, and then we push e5, taking advantage of the fact that the queen is, I mean, the pawn is pinned along the d5. So if white plus just play some random move here, like knight h5, we can simply pick up that pawn, right? Uh, tactical magician, if we like. And that's maybe the safest uh, or the simplest choice, just to take this pawn. Black has a very nice position now. The pawn structure is in their favor. The bishop pair is more active and so on. We also had some other suggestions here. Knight b4 was also, uh, yeah, much better for black. Knight b4 was also suggested. I think that's an excellent move. We're targeting the pawn on d5. I don't know exactly what to play with white here. My only concern is that somehow they'll play something like g4 and our bishop will be a little passive. But okay, it's safe to say it can also be activated on that way. So probably that's not too... <laughs> too bothering for, for black. Maybe we can take with the knights on tactical trick and so on. So that's, that looks nice also. In the game, Tohir Jonova played here. Yeah, simple play for black. Uh, she played here bishop d3. And now Jacobson played knight b4. And uh, he's now ready to pick up the, the, the pawn to get back to the pawn. a3 was playing in the game. Some tactics going on here. You can also see that the pawn on e5 is also pinned along the e5. So uh, black just took... They played bishop e7, and uh, slowly White's position started to fall apart. You can see that the pawn is not safely defended anymore. After queen b3, queen c5, black is still a pawn down, but the moment has come finally to take back that pawn. Now the queen is protecting the bishop, so e takes f4 is definitely a threat here. White just gave up the pawn, and black took back and had a big advantage in this game. So please remember this nice trick here, d5, e takes d5, and e5. Uh, are these positions from your chessable course? No, this game is played in 2020. And I think my chessable course, even if it was published last year, um, the examples are up to 2013, so uh, more or less. So I'm trying here, at, by the way, at uh, these uh, classes, I'm trying to use recent examples. So um, the other example, I think, the, the Benoni example, that one you can find in the chessable course. Aha, okay, you still have the pawn, chess knight. Sorry, I'll revoke the, the pawn. But uh, yeah, here, safe to say, I like to bring up more recent examples. I think that's interesting. So let's have a look at another example. 
Um, actually, now we'll go back in time. Yeah, let's go back to 1979. This is a game between uh, two Russian grandmasters, Makaritsev and Dolmatov. I think I picked up this example from one of Dvoretsky's uh, books. Yeah, fantastic trainer and writer, by the way, late Mark Dvoretsky. That's where I found this example, I think. Um, very pretty example. You're playing with white pieces. You can see that this is some kind of Sicilian, close Sicilian, where black played a bit uh, passively. And uh, it's your move here with white pieces. I would like to see if you can find a way in which white got a big advantage from this point. So here we go. Remember, today's uh, topic is pawn play. All right. Today's topic is pawn play. Um, yeah, I think we will move on up to this point. Yeah, that's enough. So two minutes, guys. Let's see if you can find this. Try to get a favorable pawn structure. Heavy the hero, take your time. That's too fast. You need some time for this. There are many candidate moves. There are many pawn moves, by the way. You can move basically all your pawns. So try to move them in a in a smart way, okay? Look carefully at the whole board. Scan the whole board, please, for opportunities. All right. Interesting idea by Heavy the Hero, Pawn Storm, and HDI Chess. That move was played later, by the way. I get the point, Blue Ocean and Troy Boy. That's another typical move in this structure. But are you sure this is really the right moment for it? I guess I'll take twice there. Okay. So, Amazon, you're safe to say you're closest here. Okay. That's definitely half a point or maybe a whole point for because you're really on the right track and you could work out the rest at the board probably when you have some more time. After all, two minutes is, is very little time for this, of course. Uh, we did more time for this kind of, of decisions. So uh, nice, nice work by Amazon and nobody else was even close, right? Yeah, nobody was close. You picked other pawns here. <laughs> I get the point, Tactical Magician, DL Warrior and Carlos. But I feel it's a bit premature to play like that. It's like showing your cards very quickly. Uh, what would I play against your move? Uh, good question. Maybe rook d8 simply. Rook a d8 uh, to put some pressure on the d file. All right. So, uh, yeah, Amazon, we, are, we will listen to you now. Um, go ahead and show us what should white play in this fascinating position. h4, what a surprise, right? What a surprise. I'll give you just one rule of thumb. This move is usually much stronger when there is no knight on f6. I mean, sounds very basic, no? But it's good to keep this in mind. In structures where black has played knight e7, this plan can become even stronger. Obviously, if I play h5 here, Amazon, if I re reply in the same way, the problem is that white can settle a knight on g5. I mean, theoretically speaking, black could also do that. However, their knight is far away. So white wins a lot of time. This is already unpleasant for... Um, for black, I think you could even start atta an attack here, Amazon, if you like. You can go for an attack here, primitive attack, so to speak, if you like. Um, but maybe there is something better. Yeah, maybe d5. The only thing I don't like about d5 is that I will soften up the f5 square, but maybe you will play some bishop h3 in between, right? No, you won't do that. All right. Um, let me see. I'll play knight a5, I think, right? I'll try to bring the knight here. Yeah, but is this convincing completely, Amazon? Or if you say so, I'll take your word. But uh, I don't see this clearly. Maybe if you push d4, yeah, I think this is the right idea, right? You go for an attack here. Pawn takes, queen takes, and you try to push h5. Um, favored by this knight on g5. But maybe you can do all this uh, without uh, playing d5. Maybe, yeah, this is not so clear to me. I mean, I'm in intrigued by the move g4. I don't know if I can play it here, or maybe I should start with this move. This is a sneaky move. Yeah, and then I play g4, and I take with the bishop, and I try to play h5. I think this is very simple for white, and also please notice that once we play bishop h3, there is the threat of d5, right? Tactical threat of d5. So first conclusion is that here that the moves h4 and h5, they don't mean the same thing. White doesn't really weaken themselves too much, with h4, they gain space and they prepare h5. But if black plays h5, it surely has a weakening effect. It invites the knight to g5. So let's see if we can um, 
Should we check very quickly the other moves that you're saying here? Some people are saying e5. So I think I understand the idea. Maybe you want to put a knight on e4 and so on. But maybe I can play something like rook d8 and uh, put a knight on f5. Maybe you can play knight e4. I don't know if I can take it. Um, how should we evaluate this kind of endgame? I'm not completely sure. Uh, I hope. Yeah. Knight e5 says Amazon. All right. Just let, let's just finish off this. I can play something like knight before, I think, here. I think black is even better here, honestly. Uh, black has some counterplay on this side, and uh, this bishop is not very active. Well, that one isn't active either. But I think black has counterplay here. This is not so not so simple. Oh, you want to take and play knight e6? Oh, maybe. Yeah, maybe white is better, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but something is going on here also, right? So... Yeah, tactics, no tactics. I don't know. Maybe I can take it and could I play knight e3? Um, somebody with a sharp tactical eye, maybe you can tell me what you think about this. I think black should be okay here after all. Black should be more or less okay in this position. Yeah, it's a bad bishop, but maybe we can improve it like in our first example today, right? Anyway, so e5 is possible, but it's not clear that this is the best moment to play e5. Likewise, we can, of course, go d5. The bad thing about d5, in my opinion, is that we soften up the square for black's knight. So I'll take, I'll put my, I'll put my knight somewhere. Uh, where would I put my knight? On b4, maybe, to attack this pawn. I'm not so convinced about this. I don't know you guys what you think. But uh, I think we should keep this move for later, all right? Such moves like d5, e5, when we have a pawn center, we should really choose the occasion with care for such a move. F5 was proposed by some people. Honestly, I don't understand this really. I'll take it once. If you want to take, I'll take back. I don't know what we gain from that. Um, and some people were saying G4, usually in the closed Sicilian, you reply with F5. I don't know if this is the case here. Um, maybe, right? It doesn't look that bad. After all, the bishop is on F2, so black has some pressure on the F file also. So back to Amazon. All right, Amazon, we explained all the moves. Now it's time for you to, to show the solution here. So h4, very pretty move. We're preparing to go h5. Uh, black played in the game, rook a e8. We can all guess the next move here. We could play h5 straight away. There was nothing wrong with that. But uh, Amazon chose another move here to put pressure. Bishop h3, now d5 is coming up. Black is in some trouble here. They should have played queen d8. I think the annotator was saying to wait a little and get out of the pin and so on. Maybe white can just continue exactly with h5. In the game, they played f5. Unfortunately, uh, tactically, this didn't work out well. h5. And now you, you will see something interesting here. Three consecutive pawn moves. H, h5 first, softening up the light square. Black took, which is our next pawn move. Exactly. d5, we're fighting... Um, Indirectly for the light squares, black took on d5, and our last pawn move. Of course, we shouldn't take that pawn, we should take the other pawn for tactical reasons. They took this pawn. Now you can see that black is in deep trouble here. Knight h4 is coming up, protecting the pawn. Uh, if you play knight h4 straight away, I think it's maybe not as convincing, right? Because you might not get this pawn. I understand you want to take that pawn, uh, maybe. Or you want to take this pawn? Yeah, many pawns that you can take. Aha, uh -huh. I see what you mean. 95 also, but maybe uh, my knight is protecting the other knight. No, like instead of d5 is knight h4. Uh, do I understand this? You mean knight h4 here, Amazon? That's what you mean. Um, good question. Could I play d5? Is, is that too crazy to play like that? Or do I end up with a lot of weaknesses? Yeah, maybe I do. I don't know. That's what I played. Oh, I see. So I don't know, Amazon. I don't know what's going on here. Probably this is also fine for you. But this guy is hanging. Could I take it? You have some, some sacrifice? Honestly, I don't see this uh, clearly. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. But uh, I think it was more clear-cut what they played in the game. So they took the occasion here to push d5. And after e take, they took e takes f5. Very pretty because now look at black's weaknesses. And at the same time, white has some attacking potential on the king's side, right? This pawn is not going to go away. In the game, they took on f5. Now we're speaking pure tactics here. Uh, should I quiz you on this one? Well, I can quiz you here if you like. All right, let's do some tactic, guys. White to play and get the decisive 
advantage here. All right. Did I do this in the right way? Hold on. Give me just one moment. Uh, they didn't play like I thought. Oh, I'm sorry. They took. Oh, I. Oh, I see. I see. I see. All right. Uh, hold on for a moment. Let's see if you can find this. Yeah, one minute. This is simple tactics. It shouldn't be a problem for you. Uh, Medina Tiger, I think I'll take only one. And how are you going to take back? You know, I have a little tactical trick prepared, I think. If you play like that. All right, uh, Amazon, that's okay. The, in the game, they chose another square for the queen, but it's it's perfectly fine. Uh, oh, tactical magician wants to second knight. Does that really work, tactical magician? Maybe. Yeah, maybe it does. If I decline it, if I play king h8, what are you going to play? Uh, mean swings also. If I play king h8, maybe. Yeah. All right. We have many good uh, answers here. But I think again, Amazon is closest to closest to the to the game continuation at least. All right. So, uh, so we had different uh, ideas here. Some people said knight h4. I can see this very cheap tactics. I can take only one, and if you take with queen, I can take here, right? And I have this little trick coming up. So you would have to take with the bishop, but I, I don't think you wanted that, did you? Uh, what does that mean? Maybe I can just protect the knight? Yeah, I don't like this so much for, for white. Also, we have this piece out of play. So we should try to do something better. Uh, what was your... Uh, oh, we had knight 5 That was tactical magician and mean swings were saying this. Yeah, I don't know, guys. Uh, my tactics, it's not 100% at this time of the day, but could I just go back with the king, maybe? Uh, you want to take on h5? Yeah, but is this a matter of concern? Could I play something tactical myself? Knight e4, maybe? Just take on g5, says Amazon. All right, if you say so. I guess in that case, tactical magician was going to take and something going on with this uh, knight, right? Or is this not convincing? What was your plan here, uh, Amazon? King g8? Yeah, but I, I don't follow. Don't I win the exchange here? Why? No, rook takes e8 first, right? What am I missing, Amazon? Yeah, isn't your queen uh, overloaded here? Queen takes e8. All right. What does this lead to? Oh, some equal endgame, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably this is nothing for white, really. I, I understand your point, uh, Amazon. Um, actually, black is a pawn up here. So black should be okay. Yeah, for sure. 94, maybe. Who knows? Pound of battle. Yeah, but white should go for something more than this. So, okay, Amazon, you can uh, show us what happened in the game. All right, where is Amazon? Uh, I can't... Okay. All right, please go ahead. Very, very simple, very simple. Cheap tactics. If I take with a rook, now for sure this knight is uh, very badly placed and we can start attacking it, right? Queen c2, knight h4, and so on. So in the game, they took with a queen instead. Preparing to go queen g6, right? That was uh, Black's idea here. Aha, queen c2, queen g6. However, white can carry out these tactics in a better way. So please, uh, yeah, Amazon, that, that's... But not now. Then I have queen g6, right? That was Black's idea, and Black is perfectly fine. So move order, please. Move order thinking. Exactly. We had a class on this, actually, on move orders. So maybe some of you remember. Now we win the exchange, because after queen c2 or queen d3, there is no queen g6 anymore because knight h4 is coming, right? So simple tactics. White won the exchange and they went on to win. Anyway, this is just a small part of this example. What I wanted to show you from the first place was that this plan of h4 is very, very strong to go h5. I would say in any structure, if your opponent doesn't have a knight on f6 and they can't really go h5, well, this is a very uh, enticing plan with white pieces. Sometimes in the Sicilian... Um, in the headshot, for example, you can do this with the black pieces, h5, h4, and so on. I think it's it's really an interesting plan. And you can see it in all kinds of Sicilians with white also. So, nice plan. h4, we try to go h5, so for not black spawn structure, we can even consider to put the bishop on h3 and try to push d5. On the other hand, we could wait a little with these moves until the very right moment.
All right, back to the 21st uh, century. We have a game played last year. French, uh, French Grandmaster Mazet with the white pieces here uh, played a very nice uh, game in the yeah French uh, opening, French defense with the white pieces. So French Grandmaster uh, playing the French defense. If I'm able to bring it up, let's see again. Please be a little careful, uh, patient here. I'll try to bring it up. Hold on, please. Some technical issues here, uh, but we will solve it this very moment. Okay. Don't forget today's topic, pawn play. All right. So here is the example that I was speaking about. French defense. We can see that uh, white has more space. Uh, black uh, did play c5 at some point. They did take on d4. We have this typical structure. Black has probably played f6 also and ha has taken on, on e5. So we have a fixed pawn structure right now. Uh, at this point, I would like to know what you think is White's best uh, plan of uh, action here. How should White continue in this position? I'll give you just one hint. Black's last move here was Bishop e8. All right. White to play and uh, see if we can get some, some advantage with the white pieces here. All right. Um, yeah, I'll quiz you for just two moves here, so it won't be very long. All right. Here we go. You're very close, Merina Tiger, but you should take some more time. You can maybe refine that idea, okay? You can carry it out in a better um, version, more flexible version. But you're on the right track, of course, Merina Tiger. All right, I can see everybody wants to play like Merina Tiger. Amazon, Means Fangs, Awesome Owen, Tactical Magician, Google Chess, RZ 2018. That's the right plan, but I'm not sure it's the right moment. Okay, Carlos and Blue Ocean, uh, you're on the other flank. Um, I'm not uh, sure about that. Also, your knight becomes tied to the A3 pawn if you play like that. But okay, it's probably possible as well. Interesting. Everybody wants to play that way. All right. So, how is it not G4, says Amazon? Yeah. It's not. Well, we will have to call the French Grandmaster and uh, ask for his opinion. Well, the thing is that Black has just played Bishop e8. So we talked about this last time. One important function of pawn play is to restrict our opponent's plans. So it's clear that Black would like to play Bishop h5. First, because this is a so-called bad bishop, right? In the French structure, it might be a bad bishop. And at the same time, Black has less space. So they're happy to swap pieces, generally speaking. So we could play g4 in order to prevent bishop h5. Unfortunately, if we play g4, we also soften up some of our own, own squares. So we could play with black perhaps something like g5. My plan here would be to play rook f4. Um, so I'm not sure about this. Uh, how would you like to continue with white here? Of course, h4 looks very tempting, but maybe black would play rook f4. So if you guys can see this clearly, I'm with you. But uh, I can't see it that clearly. I need only two moves to bring the rook to, to f8, and I would be perfectly coordinated. OK, Means Feng says king h1. All right, king h1. Um, I would love to play simply bishop d7 here. Your plan, I suppose, is to take and take on g5. Is that so? Uh, could I do something about that? Well, if I would play a blitz game here, I would play bishop d7. Means Feng will take my pawn on g5, and I would simply play here rook f8. That would be my first uh, impulse. If this No, oh, 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 sorry, that's horrible blitz play. I'm losing the whole game then. Yeah, you're right. I can't play like that. Okay, let's be serious. Can I take on g4 maybe? Then I guess you want to play rook g1? Is that so? There's some check here also. I don't know. Rook g1. Aha. Uh -huh. So if I give check... Yeah, this is very uh, scary now for, for black. But if I give this check, and you will have to play knight h3, is that so? Yeah, this doesn't look very convincing, does it, for, for white? Uh, instead of king h1, maybe h takes g5, says Amazon. All right. So you take on g5, I'll take... I don't want to take this yet. I'll take black simply. I'll wait for you to commit here. Yeah, so what do you want to play now, Amazon? 
what's going on here. If I'm able to, I'll play bishop d7 and rook f8. These are the most natural moves here, I, I would say. So, why not king h1? So, king h1. Yeah, but we looked at king h1 already, right? Or how, how do you mean? I don't follow. You want to take first and then play king h1? Is that so? Okay, so I'm saying I'm not interested in this pawn. This would be a mistake, probably. Then white will play rook to one and they have an attack for free. So I would just play bishop to seven here. I'm not, we had another session about materialism, right? I'll, I'm happily giving away this pawn for now. I'm just interested in uh, speeding up my, my development. Knight takes five. Yeah, we looked at this already, tactical magician. What magics did you find here? Bishop h7. I'm still a little bothered by this move because if king g7, rook f7, but I guess I can go to qh8, right? Or do we have some fancy, some mate here maybe? Queen h, am I uh, hallucinating or is that queen h6 coming? I think I'm mated here, right? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so very tricky, tricky position, no? Very tricky. Maybe I made a mistake. Maybe this move was too slow then. But what else can I play? Yeah, it got really tricky, right? It got really tricky. So maybe night before, I'm now changing my plan 100%. I want to swap the rook there so that you don't win the battle for the, um, for the f-file. Does that work? Or oh, you're going to take there? But I can take here, right? Wow, so much tactics. This was going to be about strategy, and we ended up <laughs> looking for cheap tactics. Rook takes f4. How can you make that work? Knight takes, queen takes. So I'm a pawn down, but this is not uh, good for you. Can I play bishop g6 maybe? You have to move the knight. Okay, this knight is really passive. That's true. But maybe bishop here. You have to move your knight somewhere. Uh, I'll play rook f8. I think I have compensation here. I, I like this bishop now. The French bishop is not a bad bishop anymore, right? This bishop rules now. So, yeah. Whatever you say, knight a3 says means things. Okay, let's go back to the horse hangs, exactly. So instead of king h1, king h2, followed by king g3 and rook h1. All right, Amazon. Instead of king h1, you say king h2. So that's here, I suppose. All right, that makes a lot of sense. When we have gained space with our pawns, we can very often use those squares with our king uh, later on. So what does that mean? I would either play bishop d7 and rook f8, or I would stick to this other plan. I think I'll stick to the other plan. Yeah, I'm, I'm starting to like this plan for black. I want to deflect uh, the rook uh, from the battle for the f-file. So knight takes before, I'll take on c1. You'll probably take back with a queen, right? Or, or uh, Yeah, because else the knight is hanging, right? So you take with a queen. I take knight takes d5. Is that really true? Can you play like that? Wow, that was surprising. That was very surprising. Uh, I should probably take with my knight. This knight was doing nothing. I'm happy to get back. To you. You're very materialistic, right? You win a pawn, but look at this knight. Fantastic knight. Uh, queen takes e1. All right, I understand. I'm a pawn down here, but my knight was never as good as now. Can I play bishop c6 maybe? Um, I don't know. Look at my pieces. They were never as good as, as here. I would be scared if I would play white here, but okay. You're probably happy about, about your pawn. Bishop c4 says tactical magician. All right. Uh, some check coming up here also. I guess you have everything under control, but uh, I would be very scared here. I'll, I would take on g4 now. I'm threatening to give mate. So King G3 says uh, Amazon. King G3. All right. Some cheap tactics here. I don't know. Anyone with a sharp tactical eye? Can you see some cheap tactic? I cannot really find it. If I can move my rook, I, I would put a knight on f4. But uh, where to put that rook? Or maybe I'm, I'm on the wrong track. Black's king is in danger, says uh, Amazon. Knight f6, says tactical magician. Knight f6, that's a fantastic move. But if I take it and I put a knight on e5, yeah, that won't work. Uh, all right. So very interesting. Uh, I'm only afraid that we're losing track of uh, what we were looking at today, the strategy. But okay, I'll play a few more moves. Knight b4, right? Knight b4. Rook takes d4, says tactical magician. How can you play that? I don't follow. Yeah, knight b4 is my move here. Um, so... 
What are you going to do about that knight? That bishop, I mean. Bishop b1, but then this guy is, is attacked and you don't defend here anymore, so maybe I can play something like queen, queen f8, right? Danger. Danger coming up here. Bishop h7. Okay, but I don't have to take it, right? I can ignore it, I guess. You still have many issues to solve here. So, knight takes d5. How can you... Oh, I understand. So maybe I made a childish mistake here, right? I should play king h8 instead. Just that my tactics at this time of the day, they are not 100%. Uh, I think I'm winning here with, with black, honestly. Um, too many hanging pieces. Anyway, this is uh, analysis. This is very good for you, by the way. Analysis, uh, shuffle around the pieces. This is how you can become a better chess player. And not looking at engine evaluations. Instead, try to analyze yourself because that's what you will have to do in the tournament game, right? So I, I agree with you guys. G4 makes a lot of sense uh, to uh, prevent bishop h5, gain space, and so on. Actually, king g2, king g3. Maybe that's something to take into account here after g5. Who knows? Maybe this is the best plan to play something like this and then play h5, h4. But still, uh, it's not necessary. In the game, the French Grandmaster played in a much more convincing way. He started with h3. So one big difference, I would say, or one thing that you can notice by among strong grandmasters is that they think a lot about what the opponent would like to do. So he noticed here that Black's only plan was basically to play bishop h5, which is not good anymore, of course. Here we would get into the previous variation with a lot of extra tempi because the bishop would have to go back and we could just continue, right, to gain more space and so on. So after h3, it was not easy for Black to find a good move because also the bishop cannot go there, right? So the rooks are disconnected and it would be a pity to go back with the bishop, probably. Psychologically, it would be very difficult. So in the game, black played instead here the move bishop f7. And this doesn't look nice because we're now obstructing the rook. So actually, here comes your move. Here comes your move, g4. I hope everybody understands this. Don't say, hey, but we said we shouldn't play g4 and now we play. But look carefully. Now the rook cannot go to f4. Uh, this reminds me of Karpov's games. This was a perfect uh, way of thinking of Karpov in his games. He would carry out specific moves at specific moments when his opponents wouldn't be able to play out some, some specific move. You can check that old game, Karpov uh, Yusupov. That's a fantastic game in, in the open Rai Lopez. Uh, anyway, uh, so Bishop f7, g4. If g5, maybe knight. Yeah, I think so. There are some tactics here, but not here, right? I can take with the queen. But you can probably play h4 here. And uh, I think it's extremely dangerous for black already. The queen is eyeing the h6 pawn. Yeah, after h takes, exactly. So this is very dangerous for black. They cannot play g5 anymore in the game. They started to reorganize their minor pieces. King g2, we spoke about this move. The king would like to go to g3 at some point to gain more space. Knight before was played in the game. We talked about this also. When we have a space disadvantage, we're happy to swap pieces. Knight takes, queen takes. It was interesting for white to take here, actually, go for this endgame, bring over the king. But the French Grandmaster knows that he has attacking prospects, thanks to this very strong bishop. So he keeps the queen on. Um, not easy to play black here. G5 is already a concrete threat, I would say. In the game, the two on C1, you remember this from our analysis, Black would like to deflect the rook from the f-file. But on the other hand, now white is also in command of the c-file, right? So they took the opportunity to play rook c7 after queen b6. Uh, of course, we should not go to e7, then black can start harassing the rook. We can park on c5 instead. After knight c6, black is holding the positions on the queen side, but there is a king side also, right? So... What do you think white should play at this point? All, all right, I'll quiz you for the next move. 30 seconds, please. Chest knight. Interesting idea. You go for the attack. But I have a counter uh, strike there, right? When you tactical magician also. When you push a pawn, uh, you also weaken some square, right? I think I can take advantage of that. Uh, RZ 2018, you got it. That's the move played by the Grandmaster in the game. So... Many people were saying here g5, however, I'm afraid I would play bishop h5. Uh, I don't think you want this, do you? The knight is attacked and uh, I don't know where to put it at this point. Also, if the knight moves, maybe some queen before, try to take the pawn and so on. 
So this one, we should use it a little later. Uh, H4 says Troy Boy. Int interesting move, yeah, to play G5 uh, at some point. But still, you would have the same issue, right? So maybe you would go H5 instead. Uh, interesting. After all, this is very much connected to our topic today about pawn play. So yeah, interesting. Maybe I should do the same thing, right? I should play A4 and try to create some counterattack, perhaps. Well, anyway, interesting idea. I think what uh, RZ 2018 says is the strongest plan. So please go ahead, RZ, which, which is your idea. Exactly. This good old primitive attacking plan, queen d3 to give mate on h7, works very well in this position. Black doesn't have so many defending pieces on the king side. So this is a very good move, bishop b1. Queen d8 was played in the game, queen d3, g6. All right, guys, I'll quiz you for the next move also. What do you think white played here? Pieces and pawns in perfect harmony. How did the French Grandmaster exploit this uh, move, g6? Yeah, you're right. Heavy the hero, Amazine and Troy Boy. That's the right way to go here. So, pawns and pieces working together. That's what uh, strategy is about, at least sometimes. Aha, just like in our first example today when we played f6 to improve that knight, if you remember. All right, so everybody got, to, got it right. Heavy the hero, you can execute white's next move here. Exactly, a little similar to the previous example, right? When you played h4, h5. But here it's in a much more concrete context because here we're actually about to give mate. Queen e7, black is defending. You can see that if we now play h5, black was probably going to play king g7 and they can still defend here. Or what is going on here? Hmm. I'm not sure if I understand this. What did black prepare on h5? Why didn't play h5? Um, yeah, I think that must be the reason, why, right? King d7. Some kind of uh, pawn uh, shield there. Bishop e8, probably. Maybe this is not so clear, right? In Petrosian style, we can give away a pawn in order to defend our king. And uh, who knows? Maybe we have some counter play coming up here, some tactics uh, coming up. So, white didn't play like this. They played instead king g3. Very nice. We talked about this. We can sometimes use our king in this uh, fashion. How about rook c1, rook h1, says Swing Swings. Interesting. Rook c1 and rook h1. After all, the rook is not doing so much. It will, I think, eventually uh, uh, swing over to the king side. Yeah, you can probably play in that uh, way. I like it. Uh, queen a3 is a tactical magician, but then I can play maybe queen d2 and I'm targeting this pawn also. By the way, don't forget this Petrosian uh, idea. If g5, h5, and if h5, g5, this might come up at some point. Not now, of course, but if the queen leaves, uh, I mean, something like this, if we play something like queen d2 here, who knows? Maybe black can play king d7 and h5, maybe there is g5. Well, maybe not because there might be knight takes. Oh, that was very complex. So. Yeah, I don't know. I like your move, rook c1. It makes a lot of sense to bring the rook to the attack. Although I suspect that the f file is the best uh, place for the rook. Anyway, king g3 was played in the game. Let's see very quickly what happened. Bishop e8, rook c1. Here we go, by the way. There is your move. King g7, queen e3, queen b4. And at this point, white said the time is right for the final assault. So what do you think white played here? All right, go for it. When all the pieces are in the right places, it's time to think about pawn play, right? You're right, heavy the hero, Troy Boy, tactical magician, Minz Vex, Kugel Chess, Charles Hua, RZ 2018, Blue Ocean, Medina Tiger, and also, of course, France Grandmaster Massé, Garib as well, DL Warrior. All right, so please go ahead, Troy Boy, how do you continue here with the white pieces? That's right, H5. Good moment to play this move when the black queen has just left the king side. Black played in the game queen e7. If g takes h5, what did you have planned here, uh, Troy Boy? Which was your idea? Exactly. Actually, we are back on the same uh, page as in the beginning, right? We were speaking about this pawn dynamics, or call it what you like. If you play g5, maybe black could play h5. The game is closed. But if we start with h5, they take, then we can play g5, like in Jacobson's game, right? Like anti-blockade. Yeah, exactly. Like anti-blockade motive. 
So this is very nasty for black. Their king is now very weak. The bishop works on the light squares, the queen on dark, sorry, on dark squares, and so on. So h5, queen e7, white hurried to open up the game. Here is your move, uh, Mean Sphinx. You were speaking about rook h1. Here you go. Just for you here, rook h1, targeting the pawn on h8, rook h rook h1, rook h8. And what I like about this game is also that white keeps on attacking, but also some pieces leave the board. But even so, there is enough pieces. There are enough pieces for the attack to work. So here we are again. I'll quiz everyone on this move. How would you continue here? The end is near. The end is near. We are about to win this game. We have to finish off uh, black in the most precise way. Their king is very weak. That's right. Blue Ocean, Tactical Magician, Marina Tiger. That's the way to do it. We create new tactical motives. Pawns are very good for that. Interesting move by Minsvanx. Probably that's a good idea also, your move. It looks very civilized. Aha. But most people are playing just like the French Grandmaster. All right, Blue Ocean, which is your move here? Please go ahead, uh, Blue Ocean, if you like, you can play out the move. Well, no answer from Blue Ocean. Uh, who else got it right? Uh, Kugel Chess, maybe. Did you get it, Kugel Chess? You can play it out if you like. No, you didn't get it right. Okay, Chess Knight, it's your move. How do you continue here? Exactly, let's open up more space for our attack. Black played here. I mean, we're exploiting the h5, right? Black played h5. I think you can guess the following moves here. Chess Knight, exactly. Knight h4, check. King d7. And what does this mean to you? What does this mean to your pattern recognition, having these two pawns here? What does that mean? Exactly. Very pretty move. Please notice that if th those pawns, if both of them weren't there, maybe black could defend by rook f8. Here, however, if I play rook f8, I don't have to ask you twice for why it's next move. Very pretty and very strong, right? Like in the good old days, Steinitz was good with this, uh, with, with this idea, right? Rook f6, working on entry squares on the open files. Right, so the game is basically over here. In the game, they played queen b4 and uh, queen d3. White wants to give mate on g6 after knight e7. There was uh, queen f3. Yeah, now it's over here. Black is left with some desperate moves. Oh, so we actually looked at the whole example here. Yeah, black resigned because mate is coming up. I must say, very instructive example about how to play with a space advantage. Uh, perhaps the most important thing, apart from working on both flanks the most important thing here perhaps to use our pawns to gain even more space usually they say that once we control the center uh, it's easier to fight on the flanks to take space on the flanks. so please remember this idea this little idea h3 can be met by uh, i mean bishop h5 can be met by g4 and uh, later on we can continue to work on the space advantage so pretty game pretty game in my opinion think a little about what your opponent has in mind uh, if you don't think about this, if you just think about improving the pieces, you will play something like rook f2. But then you give black a chance to, at some point, maybe to swap off the bishop for the knight, which might help them, help them at some point. Or maybe the knight before, I don't know, maybe black can try to swap pieces here. I think this would be mostly welcome for black. Also, this pawn is becoming a little more weak. All right, let's uh, continue. Let's see what else can we look at today um yeah i wanted to show you this example from um from last year uh, young grandmaster from uzbekistan sindarov played this game um with the white pieces so here we are as you can see um uh, we have some kind of which structure would what what name would you put on this structure? I don't know which. How do you feel comfortable with this structure? Some Rosolimo maybe Sicilian Rosolimo structure maybe. Um, White is, has a very pleasant game, of course, as you can see. D five is weak, unlike D four, which can always be covered by 
c3 so safe to say white has a nice position here although i'm struggling to find the correct name to this structure but never mind about names what is important here is to find the right plans so you're playing with the white pieces uh, let's see if you can find white's best move here and the, the upcoming continuation all right here we go i'll give you one minute 30. what did a young grandmaster from uzbekistan play at this point I'm afraid that goes against the logics of the position tactical magician. I'm very sorry, but you're making a huge favor to black if you play like that. So somebody was very close here. Amazin. Yeah, uh, I see what you mean. It's fine. Your your way to, of playing is, is fine also. Yeah, you can give yourself one point. Good work. By the way, the engine doesn't agree on this uh, move. Uh, I agree on it, but the engine proposes something else. So if you play the engine move, that's okay also. But uh, yeah, if you want to play like the Grandmaster, uh, it's in a different way. I see Charles Hua provocation. Is that what you want? I think I'll play f6 anyway. Yeah, not much else to do there. So what, what you will see here is a very typical plan in this structure. It's good to know about this plan because it comes up a lot, I would say, with both colors and actually on both uh, flanks also. All right, so Amazon RZ 2018 and DL Warrior, you were very close. Uh, Heavy the Hero, uh, you were also very close, yeah. Let's listen to DL Warrior. What was your idea here? Exactly, A4. Pattern recognition. Please notice, when your opponent has a pawn structure like this, it's a very interesting idea to play like that. You can come across the same idea, for example, in the Dutch. When black plays f5, you can very often go for h4, h5, right? It's the same idea. We are trying to create weaknesses, which is another important facet of pawn play. So a4 was played in the game. By the way, which is the engine move? The engine move is rook d2. Just for the record, to play 96, the engine is focusing on peace improvement, which is, of course, Fine, if the engine says so, we should believe it. But for human interest, this plan is excellent. A4, very typical plan in this structure. So black is faced with the threat of A5. As you can see, there would be immediate threats against uh, black's pawns. So they played in the game knight F8. By the way, other moves here. F4, don't do that, please. It's uh, counterproductive. I would take on F4, and I'm extremely happy to have liberated this uh, bishop now. I think the safest choice here is just to take and to play knight e5. I think I have looked at this in the past. Um, yeah, black uh, is very happy now. They have no bad pieces anymore. Unlike the initial position, you can see that the bishop on g7 is actually some kind of bad bishop here. So a4 uh, is what we would like to play here. Bishop g5 was proposed. Well, I'll play simply f6, I think. and I have nothing really to worry about. Um, G3 was proposed also to go F4. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe you can play like that. Half a point for G3. Uh, it's definitely possible to play like that. Anyway, let's go back to the game. So A4 says DL Warrior. Black played Knight F8. And um, here you said, okay, please continue DL Warrior. Please continue. Your move is fine, by the way. You can play that if you like. Um, all right, I think we lost DL Warrior. Yeah, I understand. But uh, let me tell you something. What you play will ultimately transpose to the game. Your move is A5, which is working out well. However, in a practical situation, I think that uh, Sindaro in this game, he didn't really bother to calculate Bishop takes C4. Um, okay, we can see here by some calculation, we can see that black is not able to take there because white will take and wind exchange and if rook takes you can take on c4 uh, you should not take on d8 because then i can take on e2 and so on but you can take on c4 and actually this would lead to the game so it's perfectly fine to play like that but i understand that white wanted to keep things simple and in the game they just took on d8 first and then they played your move a5 so basically it's the same thing however what we should not do like somebody did here we should not take on d8 because in that case Black's king can help in the kingside defense, right? In the queenside defense. So 
Very important not to help them to swap rooks. If they want to swap, they will have to do it. So a5 was played at this point. Um, yeah, as you can see, a variety of tactical motives appear now, even sacrifices like take and a6 at some point. Uh, a lot of tactical ideas once the pawn gets closer to the queening square. Rook takes, king takes. Um, yeah, you can see for yourself. Black cannot play knight e7, right? What would happen in that case, anyone? What would you play with white? White to play in wing, right? Exactly. Okay, we have a DL warrior here. Excellent work, DL warrior. You have seen the tactical cheap trick here, right? Aha, just like mean Sphinx also. That's right. We can take on b6 and we take on c5. Next turn, I can, of course, not take on c4, right, uh, DL warrior? Then you will queen in this game, if I'm not mistaken. So, go for it, dear warrior. We're waiting for you. White will queen. Exactly, exactly. Knight b6, bishop takes c5, and so on. So, safe to say, this pawn, it's a real headache for black. I think there was a famous endgame by my compatriot, uh, Ulf Anderson. He also used this plan in a game against Tempone many years ago in, uh, in Argentina. Uh, so this is a good plan to remember. Just that Anderson's king, actually, they walked uh, on the light squares, I think, in that game. Anyway, back to the game. Bishop takes, bishop takes, knight e6 was played by black, white played here, very good move, c3. So anyone, why do you think white played c3? Can you give me at least two reasons why uh, Sindarov played c3 here? Why? What's the point? Aha, one to prevent knight e4. Two, to prepare b4. And three, yeah, nobody said this, but uh, I'm sure you thought about it. Just like uh, Anderson's plan, he's preparing to bring in the king, right? So he's opening up a path for the king along the white squares, where there is no opposing black bishop. So very nice move, c3. I think this was like a rapid game. And even I'm even more impressed by the quality of this game. King d6. King c2, f6, not a move that black wanted to play. However, uh, their knight is restricted right now, so they really need to move the pawn. They could go two steps also, but in that case, perhaps the game is open. I don't know, maybe white can take and play something like g4, create a pass pawn, and so on. So f6 was played in the game, and you will have to guess white's next move here, guys. What do you think white played here? We stay uh, faithful to our topic today, pawn play. Can you think of an enticing pawn move with white here? Played by uh, Sindarov. Aha, you're right, chess knight and DL warrior. That's exactly what happened. Please notice also flexibility thinking, right? We're not committing our A pawn. We don't want to commit the A pawn. I see your point, Amazon. That looks very technical to gain space on the queen, on the king side as well. Um, interesting idea. Amazon says G4. I like your move. It's perfectly possible to play like that to gain some space. Especially if later on we swap the, the bishop, right? It's good to put our pawns on the opposite color as on bishop. Anyway, another move uh, appeared here. Uh, mean swings. You can play out this, all right? What did white play at this point? How to step up the pressure. Exactly. Please notice it's very important to understand this. We don't take and we don't advance. We want to keep both plans uh, in the store, so to speak. We are, we are waiting to see which one will be used. So b4, very smart move. We can see that by now there is a concrete threat. White is threatening to take and take on c5. So black must do something about that. Um, in the game they played here knight c7 and uh, white hurried to take. Uh, where would you take mean sphinx? On b6 or on c5? Uh, according to you, which is most logical? Um, I would take on... Probably c5. Aha, but why? Uh, to keep the weakness on a7. Exactly. Good thinking. Please go ahead. Don't swap on b6 because in that case, fewer pawns are left on the board. Here, however, we're very happy to keep more pawns on the board. Yeah, you can probably guess the next move also, means things, right? Uh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I guess a6. Or no, that yeah, might be over. Maybe, maybe not, because you're you're inviting me to B3? go for that. Maybe King B three. Exactly. Yeah. Please go ahead. He played King B three in the game. Exactly, because we are interested in bringing the king a little closer. Black played King C six. So if you want to br bring the king to A four, but I don't know if you can get any further, right? 
Yeah. Uh, I think you should probably go for another uh, place. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, so the king would like to go to C4. What does that mean? Yeah, Amazon, you're right. There are fortress uh, Maybe bishop ideas. G8. Exactly. Bishop G8, black plate H6. And you can continue. Uh, uh -huh. So something interesting happened here. Bishop F8, black is desperately trying to defend all their weaknesses, right? They are doing very well. How about uh, check? Yeah, like... they did that in the game, but first they played this move. We talked about this, right? We oh, want yeah. to fix the pawns on that color. So now they played your move, bishop d5. So anyone, I have a question for all of you. Should black take or should they do something else? Uh, okay, thanks, uh, Minsvengs. We will listen to, to everybody else now also. So what do you think? Should we take or should we do something else? What is your opinion on guys? Take, says Amazon. All right. D do everybody agree with Amazon or uh, anybody has a different uh, opinion here? I'm curious to find out. Something else. Yeah, good good uh, reply. King G7 says Amazon. Yeah, you're right. Here the game is decided. I thought this was interesting also for you to look at. Uh, very often the endgames might be drawn, but they are lost due to mistakes. That's the nature of endgames, right? So King D7, King D7 actually white would have good, uh, black would have good chances of a draw. Even if white in the end wins a pawn, it's not completely clear that they can win here. Somebody said a fortress coming up, and I think that's true. It's not so easy for white to enter. You can see that black has some kind of, of fortress here, uh, or uh, barrier, barrier. The white king cannot really get there. So I looked a little at this endgame. My conclusion was that probably white should try to bring the king to, to, the, to the other side, try to enter this way. But black will have some counterplay on, on the queen side also. So it's uh, not so clear, not so clear. It's uh, white who has chances of winning, of course, they're a pawn up and so on, but black could still survive. However, very often in practical play, uh, mistakes are made due to, you know, uh, people are exhausted or have little time or nerves and so on. So black took on the five, losing mistake. And uh, after it takes, yeah, the pawn is strong and also this pawn is falling off, right? King d7. So let's see here. We speak about pawn play today, right? Pawn play. If you're forced to play a pawn move, which pawn move would you play? Let's see if you play the same move as the uh, Grandmaster. I see your point, Heavy the Hero. That's definitely not a bad move, what you're saying. But Amazon and Tactical Magician, you found the move. Pattern recognition again, right? Uh, once you have a bishop endgame like that and so on. Uh, pawn majorities. You can see black has a pawn majority on the king side. How can we restrict that pawn majority? Um, smart thinking here. There might be a million ways to win, but we should try to make it as easy as possible. So, chess knight, uh, which is uh, your move here. Exactly. And that's what they played in the game also. G4, every, everything was winning probably. But this is a very technical path because we simply don't let them use that pawn majority. So, black played a6 and we just take and that's how the game ended. Suk swung and yeah, black resigned. So basically, that's what we have seen here in this example. It looked like a almost a level position, right? But it was not level. This move was very important for white to, to play a5. You can see also that black cannot play a5 really, right? Then they're hanging the pawn on b6 and so on. So there is no easy way out for black in this structure. Maybe what black would have liked would have been to have the rook on b8 and the pawn on a6 so as to be able to play b5. But, uh, I mean, that's a different story. The, the position is like this. This plan is very, very strong. A4, A5. So maybe we should pick up a last uh, example today. Let me see if I can find a last example for us to, to look at. Yeah, I think I know which example I will pick. This game was played just uh, one week ago, I think. So let's have a quick look at the game by uh, Hikaru Nakamura. All right? He had a very good tournament. Uh, lately, and uh, I would just like to show you one part of a game played by Nakamura with white pieces and Esipenko playing black. So, let me ask you the following. Uh, I, I won't quiz you on this. I'll ask you a question here instead. If you're white, the pawn is hanging, right? Would you play d3 or would you play e3? So, would you play e3 or d3? with white here. Please uh, answer to the chat 
and uh, give me some some argument, right? Give me some thought, some justification. Why would you play like that? So you're playing white here. You have Nakamura's position here. You have to choose between d3 and e3. I would like to know which one do you think is best from these two moves. All right, uh, Amazon, interesting answer. Let's see what uh, what the rest think, if it's the same thing. Aha, uh -huh. I think most people uh, are answering the same way. Right, good thinking, yeah. So, uh, we could play d3, which at first sight looks normal, no? To protect the pawn and uh, also uh, bring out the bishop, maybe. However, in this case, black would have a perfectly uh, playable position. Maybe it's something like bishop g4, attacking the pawn again. We can play c6 so that the bishop is not so strong. It's true that this pawn is slightly weak, but we can uh, defend it very easily with, with our heavy pieces. So in the game, like Amazon was saying, e3 is much stronger because in this way we're fighting for the long diagonal where there is no opposing bishop. After all, white is sitting with the bishop pair and we should try to make use of this bishop pair. That's why this move, although maybe it's uh, counterintuitive because black can play d3, but black has no problem. I mean, white has no problem with this really. What they're interested in is taking a, a command of the long diagonal. So queen c3 was played by Nakamura. We can see bishop b2 is coming up. Yesipenko hurried to play knight e4 because before the bishop is on b2. Uh, queen c4, moving the queen again. Blunder, which is a blunder? Sorry, mean sphinx. Bishop e2. I don't follow. Uh, I'm just saying that white is about to play bishop e2. If you play just some random move like bishop f5, white will play bishop e2 and the knight couldn't go to e4 anymore, right? Because we have pressure along the long diagonal. So for that reason, black hurries to play knight e4, uh, hitting the queen again. Queen c4, and uh, the knight is off the diagonal. Yeah, but black is trying to play f f6 later on, I guess, so as to limit the bishop a little. That's how I how I understand this game. Anyway, let's, let's continue, let's continue. Bishop f5, bishop b2, you can see black cannot take the pawn because uh, there is this cheap, uh, cheap trick, right? So... Uh, black played queen d7 instead. Black is playing all the normal moves here. I think that if you look at this position for just uh, five seconds, you would actually think that black is better here. Black looks more active. You have this far advanced pawn, pressure against d2 and so on. Um, however, white is better here. But you have to play like uh, Nakamura did. So I'll ask you for white's uh, next two moves here. All right. I'll give you just... Uh, 40 seconds. How do you think Nakamura continued in this position? Interesting move by Amazon and Tactical Magician. Yeah, we will have to call Nakamura and uh, ask for his opinion. Maybe the bishop uh, retreats. Can I do that? Or can I do something else? There is also move b5, right? Uh, Amazon and Tactical Magician. Maybe I can go b5 and I deflect you from the attack at my knight or what do you think maybe not i'm not sure i'm not sure i'm just uh, thinking out loud all right nobody plays like uh, nakamura no all right let's let's see here maybe we, because we're speaking about pawn play <laughs> f3 yeah i understand to drive away the knight probably black will play what would they play queen d6 knight sorry knight d6 I don't know about this move. I'm looking at this for quite a while now. Maybe that's a smart move, right? Because where is the queen supposed to go? If I, if I go to d4, now black can take, and suddenly they can take on d4 because there is no trick with queen anymore. So b5 looks very strong, don't you think? Queen Oh, queen b3, I see. But still, I feel like your queen is drifting away, right? I can play bishop e6 now, and you'll play queen d1. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe this is possible for, for white. Queen c1 says uh, mean sphinx. Yeah, maybe. Maybe queen c1 is even better. Aha. Uh -huh. I have no idea, honestly, uh, what would uh, what's going on here. Maybe this is also okay for white. Then. Yeah, probably. But I think what, what, uh, what he played in the game was very convincing. Yeah, this is not intuitive, but it was very strong. He just took on e4. 
it looks like a crime to give up the the Fianchetto bishop, but it worked out very well in the game because he is going to play f3 next turn. Don't get me wrong; it's not that Black is going to mate, right? Right? We're going to play f3 next turn. So if they take with the rook, we can play queen c3 quickly, threaten mate, and our next move saves to say f3. One interesting thing about this position is that if you look at the bishops, you could say that okay, uh, none of the bishops is very active, but if we use pawn play, we can actually help this bishop. So if we want to help this bishop by pawn play, which move could we play here? What do you think? Exactly. We could go g4. At some point, we could go g5. I'm not saying now, but maybe later. Maybe we can prepare it somehow. King, rook f2, king f2, rook g1, g5, and so on. While black has no equivalent plan for their bishop. Their bishop has no good diagonal, really. It's not uh, realistic to think about putting the bishop on that diagonal, and so on. So, um, yeah, in the game, they took with the bishop instead. Nakamura hurried to play here, of course, f3 to keep uh, kingside safety. Rook c1, rook e7, queen f4. Very nice move so that the rook can join the battle. This is a very pretty game, I would say. Rook c1, putting more pressure. We can see the idea of b5 coming up to take the pawn on c7. This bishop is still waiting for action. So queen e6 was played in the game. b5 was played. I thought they were going to take here. But uh, White found a smarter plan. They played here rook e4, so that they can take on e7, c7 with a rook, threatening the queen. All right. One last thing here before we finish today. Uh, yeah, game changer. Now the game changed completely. Rook d7. Um, let's do a last tactical uh, quiz here. White to play and win. All right. You actually you don't win material. You saw this. You saw this. Okay, me too. <laughs> we, we both saw it. So I'll bring it up. It's very, very pretty, I must say. It's very pretty. Uh, let's see if all of you can find this little combination by Nakamura. All right, here we go. Um, I'll ask you just for one variation, okay? I'll ask you for one variation. And um, yeah, I, I didn't play like in the game, Tactical Magician. I, I tricked you. <laughs> I played something else just to see the other variation. But in a way, you, you repeated Nakamura's uh, moves. So let's see if you can find the way in which White was able to transpose into a winning end. All right. Uh, who got it? Nobody. No. <laughs> All right. Tactical Magician, you were closest. So you can do it. OK, please go ahead. Let's see if we can find a little combination. So you play rook c8 check, and uh -huh. then if I play king f7, uh, uh, it, mm, yeah, queen f5. Exactly, queen f5, and we win something, right? So rook d8 was played. Now the rook is unstable, and the bishop is on priest. I mean, it's so, undefended. So bishop takes f6. Aha! Uh -huh. I cannot take with the queen because I lose the exchange in the end. So I have to take back. But then queen g4 checks. Uh -huh. So now we have, when you do this exercise, you have to look at these three moves, right? So let's mm -hmm. finish them off one by one. King f7 doesn't make sense here. Uh, mm -hmm. You have a simple tactic queen here, h5. right? Queen h5. Queen h5 and you pick up the bishop. Right. Mm -hmm. King uh, h8 was the move that I asked you for. Yeah, uh, but here I have queen b4. Exactly. Very, very pretty move. Queen b4 in this way. Uh, it's about intermediate moves, right? I have to take, and you're just in time to take. Aha. Uh -huh. yeah. So for that reason, I have to play king f8. That's what's happening in the game. Now queen b4 doesn't work anymore because the king is defended, but you can take on d8. And now since the king is on f8, you can give check and you pick up the bishop. So that's how the game went. Very, very fascinating little combination. Uh, like I told you, actually, white didn't win material. However, the pawn structure is very bad now for black. Just one last accuracy here from white. What would you play, Tactical Magician? Yeah, he won this endgame, of course. Uh, you would win it also. It's uh, much better for White. But we need one last de detail here. We need one last detail. Flexibility, guys. Flexibility. King so we are... Exactly. After all, Black is threatening to play Queen C1. So we must play this King move first. And we keep perfect control of this position. White is basically winning here, thanks to their good structure. Uh, I think one good plan is just to bring in the king. Although we must be careful about queen c5. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, what would happen here, by the way? 
Uh, had he played 26, what would White play? Sorry, please go ahead. No, uh, so... Uh, but I think Black can't move really, right? The, the Queen can't move so yeah. much. F4 says means F4. Exactly, something like that. Uh, gain some more space maybe. And uh, sooner or later we should win this game because the Queen is very passive. In the game, I think they played Queen C5 and Nakamura took this pawn and, and he went on to win. Uh -huh. So, uh, very pretty combination, right? Very pretty combination at this point. Uh, rook c C8 followed by bishop takes. He took then traded. Okay, means things. I see. Aha, uh -huh. very, very pretty combination. You have to see these variations though. And from the very beginning, here was the initial question should we play d3 or e3? The answer is probably we should go e3. It looks uh, perhaps counterintuitive to let black play d3, but it's actually very good because we can then make use of this. Long diagonal where there is no opposing bishop. So that's about pawn play, guys. I hope you have enjoyed this lesson. Thanks and uh, see you next time.